having arrived here in Belgium in the Flanders region just a couple of days ago, Si and I had a very quick reminder as to just how harsh the roads here are to ride. So on Sunday at the Tour of Flanders, the riders will get some nice flat tarmac roads, but they'll get some flat cobbled roads, and they'll get a few climbs as well, some tarmacs, but some of those are also cobbled. But it's not just the cobbles and the climbs that make it so difficult. It's the narrowness of the roads, it's the cracks in the roads, the holes in the roads, it's the mud on the road. This really is a very difficult place to ride. So what are the riders gonna to do to their bikes to give them the best possible chance of getting around the Tour of Flanders? We went to find out. Over at Dimension Data, they've got the full array of bikes they could use this classic season. Now, I'm stood right next to Edvald Boson Hagen's bike. Now, this is the Cervelo R3 Mud Edition, so this is probably going to be his Paris-Roubaix bike, not necessarily his Tour of Flanders bike. But it's really interesting for a number of different reasons. So the R3 Mud has got much greater mud clearance, as the name might suggest, meaning that he's also having to use Ultegra brakes to allow for the greater drop between the caliper mount and the rim itself. And he's also running speed plays pave pedals they're very cool they look like something that you might actually hang around your neck rather than put your feet on but they've removed the body of the pedal there to allow for mud to drop through so if he has to get off and walk then he's going to be able to clip back in which is very useful then the team have also got a very small number of continental pro race limited tubular tires in a 28 but only a 28 well, BMC are at the same hotel as Team Dimension Data. They're just about to go out for one of their last rides before the Tour of Flanders, but they are running some pretty special continental tyres. As you can see, they've got the orange sidewall, which is slightly harder, apparently, than a normal sidewall, but the top, the black part itself, is actually softer. So for the Tour of Flanders, they're going to be running 25C tyres, so not particularly wide, but next week at Paris Bay, they'll be up to 28 or even 30. Now, here's a man who knows how he likes to have his bike set up for the Tour of Flanders. Alexander Christoph, of course, last year's winner of the race. Now, there's not too many differences, as with other bikes, versus what they normally use in road races, but there are a few tweaks. So, firstly, we have got a chain catcher here, SRAM one, of course, uh, which you wouldn't normally have, but just to be sure over the cobbles that his chain doesn't slip off in towards the frame. Uh, ETAP has been used at the Tour of Flanders before with the AG2R squad last year, but uh, without being too unfair, this is probably their best chance of taking the first win with that group set. Now, if we take a look up here, he's got those small blips, which again, he does use up there on the uh, top part of the bar in normal racing, but it'll be particularly handy over the cobbles. A lot of riders choosing to ride on the tops when they go over the rough stuff. Like a lot of other teams, they're using these brand new Conti Competition Pro Limited tubulars with the orange sidewalls. Uh, 25 millimetres again. Haven't really seen anyone with bigger tyres than 26 so far. And the other thing that they quite often adjust on the pro bikes is the bottle cages. So normally you'd be running full carbon cages, but with these ones, you can see, you're able to push them down, which means that you can make them tighter so that the bottles are fitted more securely and have less chance of rattling about and out of the bike when you're going over the cobbles. Now he's choosing to use Zips 303 wheels. These were one of the first ever carbon or full carbon wheels that were used over the cobbled classics. Traditionally riders use those old aluminium box section rims. So they're very much tried and tested, but this of course is the latest model. Now it's fair to say that this will make a great bike for the cobbled classics. It's just not clear as to whether it's going to make its debut in 2016 or in the future because this is a brand new Merida Scultura disc, but it hasn't actually been launched yet. So whether Lamprey Merida will be racing it or not, it's not clear, but it does look the business. This is a David Chimolai's bike and there are a number of changes aside from the fact that it is a new disc bike. So the bottle cages you'll recognise have gone to aluminium ones from carbon ones and he's also running 28C tyres on there and there is it's nice to see plenty of clearance on this new disc frame set. This time last year, Team Sky's Geraint Thomas was one of the favourites for the Tour of Flanders, having won the E3 just nine days previous. This year, people aren't thinking about him so much because he hasn't done the traditional warm-up races for the Tour of Flanders, but don't bet against him. Uh, this is the bike that he will be using. They've got the FMB Paris-Roubaix tubulars, 25mm tyres. They're running for Flanders. They'll be using 27mm tyres for Paris-Roubaix itself. Now, we saw Christophe's bike earlier with the aluminium Elite bottle cages. Uh, Team Sky are also opting for these, 
but as they normally do, they've gone one step further. So I was just speaking to one of the mechanics and he has had to put sandpaper on 80 bottle cages. He said there was very little skin left on his fingertips by the time he finished that. But just going the extra mile to reduce the chances even further of the bottles coming out. Now one thing which is not specific to the cobbles, but I still love about Team Sky is the fact they've got these pro stems in one millimetre increments. So Geraint Thomas' stem is 131 millimetres in length. Now they do have some options when it comes to the Cobble Classics at Team Sky, as Sai will show you now. Well, thank you Dan. So this is the K8, or should I say perhaps it's part of the K series, because there is technically another one, which is the KS8, which has a little suspension shock just about there. But this one, the K8, is actually in the prototype stages. So Luke Rowe is the only guy on the team at the moment to be riding it. And basically, some of the team were a little bit slow to adapt to the suspension because they only get to ride it really for a couple of races a year. So Pinarello have produced them a bike with the same characteristics, the same geometry, the same tire clearance, but they've simply removed that rear shock. So this is a little bit more familiar to the guys. And it's still quick, it's still aerodynamic as you can see, so it still bears a lot of similarities to the F8. Now otherwise, the only thing I suppose you should point out is that Luke Rowe opts for a 139 millimeter long stem. We've been joined by ethics mechanic Kenny here, and we've also been joined by Tom Bonin's bike. Now this is the first one that we've seen for the Tour of Flans on Sunday, where he's using a completely different bike than the rest of the year. He's gone for his Roubaix bike, it's been a late decision, so what were the reasons behind that for him? Um, it gives you more comfort on the cobbles, and let's hope he will try something on those cobblestone sections. So he had only made the decision on the Friday before Flanders what bike he was going to use. He's so experienced, more than anybody else, so why did he leave it so late to make that decision? Well, on Wednesday we had a recon and he tried both bikes and uh, he had a better feeling with the Roubaix. So talk us through the differences between this bike and the other one that he was using. Yeah, well, there is a small difference, like it gives you more comfort and uh, in speed it's, it's, it's actually the same. So. so once we get to Roubaix, will there be any differences from the bike we've got here now? Only the the chainring will change and uh, the tyres. So a bigger chainring? Yeah, but what? the inner chainring, yeah. It goes from a, from a 39 to a 44. Yeah, quite big for Paris-Roubaix, aren't yeah. they? Uh, now, Tom is very experienced at Paris-Roubaix as well. He's going for a record victory there, but firstly, he's got to concentrate on the Tour of Flanders. Uh, we've been making a big thing about bottle cages throughout this video, but these look fairly standard. Those are the standard ones for uh, like every other race. It's not that Flanders is, you cannot compare Flanders to Roubaix. There are some cobblestone sections, but not like uh, Carrefour de l'Arbre. The so bottle cage will hold the bottle. You don't have any problems with bottles flying about? Let's hope not. Thank you very much. So there you have it. Riding over cobbles is not all about bottle cages. A lot of it is about tyres. Some of it's about bottle cages as There's well. There's a bit about bottle cages, to be fair, yeah. Now, if you haven't yet seen our Tour of Flanders preview show, you can find a link to it in that box, which is just up there. Yeah, and if you fancy seeing some more pro bikes, then we have hundreds for you here on GCN. If you click just down there, you get through to our pro bike playlist. And as ever, it's free to subscribe to GCN and you'll find a logo somewhere around the box that you're viewing this window in. Just click on that and you'll subscribe.